Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Hop, TFB TV's least financially responsible contributor. Welcome back to another episode of Budget Blasters. We're gonna skip the theme song because we've got places to be. A few months ago, I picked up a Remington R51 for 200 bucks, which probably sounds like a great deal if you don't know anything about the R51. But if you keep up on gun news, you might already be familiar with the downfall of the Remington R51. It was released in 2014 to an almost universally negative reception. It's pretty, but it was also pretty much completely unreliable. The gun was redesigned and the Generation 2 pistols came out, but didn't fare much better. Remington declared bankruptcy in 2018, so what does that tell you? The Remington R51 was billed as the spiritual successor to the old Remington Model 51, designed by John Pedersen and sold by Remington 100 years ago. The R51 shares a lot of design details with the old Model 51, including the hesitation locking system. Hesitation locking differs from tilting barrel short recoil in that it uses a fixed barrel and a tilting movable breech block in the slide. Under recoil, the slide and breech block travel together rearwards for a short distance. Then the breech block is arrested by the locking block while the slide moves a bit farther. And then the slide picks the breech block back up and they both move all the way to the rear together. The hesitation is that brief interval where the slide is moving without the breech block. This design allows the recoil spring to be over the barrel like in a straight blowback pistol, i.e. a Makarov or PPK, and thus a nice low slide and low bore axis. But unlike a straight blowback pistol, the hesitation lock doesn't require a stiff recoil spring and a heavy slide, so felt recoil should be much less. So should you trust a 9mm handgun using a recoil system designed for 380 ACP 100 years ago? Remington thinks you should, and they even marked the barrel as 9mm plus P as an almost passive-aggressive defense of the gun's safety. The R51 came out during the renaissance of single-stack 9mm carry pistols, the brief half-decade where we were all chasing slimline micro handguns, before the SIG 365 came out and reminded everybody, capacity is king. Whatever, dude. I still carry a Glock 19. Viewed in profile, the R51 doesn't seem all that small. It's just barely shorter than a Glock 19 and the same height. All of this for a standard magazine capacity of 7 rounds, less than half that of a Glock 19, with a half inch less barrel length. But the width, the all-important trump card of carrying a pistol at the 4 o'clock position, is almost exactly 1 inch. The R51 is a pistol with several smart features, and yet, it's just awful. And that's even before we bring reliability into the equation. Failure to eject. Failure to feed. Round is nosedived into the front of the magazine. Magazine release is bound up. Slide is bound up too. So let's go ahead and just... There we go. The R51 has rounded contours all over, including anti-snag sights. Not the usual anti-snag sights that are sloped on the front and square at the back. Those sights mean you can't rack the gun off of a table or a belt or something as easily, and they're not anti-snag because the square part of the sights is still the part that can snag on the draw. Not that I've ever had a gun snag on the draw like that, it's just interesting to point out. The R51 has sights that are rounded on the back and square on the front, the best of both worlds. The sights themselves are a serviceable, squared-off, three-dot style fast enough and accurate enough for a carry piece at typical pistol range. As advertised, the R51 is a very ergonomic shape and does point naturally thanks to the grip angle. It does sit low in the hand. It's trim, but not too skinny. It has a great beaver tail contour and trigger guard undercut, so you can get a nice high grip. And it also has Taurus style memory pads on the side of the frame for your support hand thumb. The frame has excellent front strap checkering and decent grip panel checkering. The magazine release is a nicely checkered oval shape and it is ambidextrous. And that is all the good stuff. The honeymoon phase with the R51 ends the second you pull the trigger for the first time. Oh god. <sighs> wow. I don't think I've ever shot anything that was quite so uncomfortable. The bad aspects of the design on paper mostly come down to efficiency. The R51 has a mag capacity of 7 rounds in 9mm. For a gun this big and relatively heavy, 7 rounds of 9mm don't hardly seem like enough. The trigger is short and light, but still, somehow, against all odds, it sucks. 
It's got a short bit of very light takeup and a vague break at about 5 pounds with a ton of over travel. The reset is not audible or tactile, but it is fairly short. Taking the R51 apart for cleaning might be the worst experience of my life, but luckily it's a one-time affair. After you field strip the R51 for the first time, I promise you will either sell the gun or just run it dirty until it kicks the bucket. The Remington R51 also has the dubious distinction of being the most agonizing gun I've ever shot. It is an unbelievably unpleasant experience. Piece of shit. Eight point oh five seconds. Given a malfunction clear, I'm gonna give myself that one in terms of time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eh, so seventy-two out of eighty. And this hurts like a motherfucker to shoot. The grip safety is to blame. When you're holding the gun, it seems like the grip safety is perfectly shaped. It goes flush with the frame and the contours of the beaver tail and back strap look perfectly smooth. But when you actually shoot it, it's another story. Uh, this is 147 grains, 10 yards, shooting combat hold on the red. And we're getting grouped down here. Can't hold a better group because I'm in so much fucking agony right now. That's hitting really low with those 147s. It's also hitting right. The sights are probably somewhat adjustable. As far as I can tell, the issue is actually that under recoil, the grip safety pinches the web of your hand and then pulls it away. For a life-saving tool, I think I could deal with it, however. After all, the most critical feature of a life-saving tool is reliability and not comfort. Got two magazines loaded with Ventura 124 grain, jacked at hollow point. Feeling okay there, buddy? Awesome. So here we go. The R51 is not reliable. Not even the Gen 2. <laughs> or it's jammed again. Oh god. Gotta get that mag out. <laughs> you fucking shitting me. It's just muscle it back. <laughs> so use use those muscles, man. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, the armorer's tools for that include a sledgehammer. Yep. <laughs> Vice block, a rubber mallet. Ah, <laughs> oh, you got one! Was that spent? That was an empty. It was. What the? <laughs> During the first 200 rounds of break in, the gun was a disgrace. Constant failures to return to battery, nosedive failures to feed, the magazine falling out, stove piping. It went through the whole Rolodex of failure modes. Ow. I could feel that one pulling my skin away as the grip safety rebounded after being shot. This landed in my hand. After the break-in period, the gun is actually somewhat reliable with a few exceptions. Not this again. Fine. First, it's strangely difficult to rack the slide on a full magazine. Likewise, it rarely succeeds in feeding a round from a full magazine if you load it up to 7 plus 1. Apparently, there's so much resistance when chambering a round on a full mag that sometimes it overcomes the mag release retention and the mag falls out when you rack the gun. Why? And the whole time you're fucking with this thing, trying to get it to work, every single shot is agony. I honestly don't know how they did it. It's just 9mm. Time to punish myself again. Love the way that barely wants to chamber that first round. Fuck's sake, dude. And that's the R51. I don't trust it, I don't like it, but I still kind of love it and I wish Remington had pulled it off. The R51 looks like nothing else on the market. Clean curves and throwback stylings, but the failure of the R51 might have poisoned the market against this sort of retro look. It's ruined for everyone now and we have to go back to spiky geometric vomit.
The fact that the R51 can be had brand new for under 250 bucks tells you all you need to know, and I suspect the one-two punch of the R51 and the RP9 failing had a lot to do with Big Green's current financial troubles. But who knows, Colt was even worse than Remington for even longer, and they keep clawing their way out of the poor hole, so maybe there's hope for Remington yet. <sighs> Fucker, I hate this gun. But I love this gun. Thanks for watching, guys. TFB TV is supported by Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We appreciate their support, so check them out. TFB TV is also supported by viewers like you via Subscribestar and Patreon. If you sign up for one of those, you'll be eligible for the giveaways James puts together, so check out the links in the video description for more. See you on the next one. Stay safe and stay sane. That's just not fun. Nothing about this is fun.